Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom, part one. So, I started reading um, one Chronicles. I mean, one Chronicles um, that I just started, um, and I actually was already like in Chronicles um, eight, possibly nine, and the Holy Spirit said, "Go back, go back and read again." And to be honest with you, I thought it was telling me that because um, I skipped kind of through the names. I did. I cheated. You know, because you see all the names and, and, and I, you know. So I skipped uh, over some of the names. I read some, but, you know, Ham and Hagar and, you know, all the lists of names. David, you know, um, Aaron, you know, all of our beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ regardless, you know, and. As I was, you know, I said, maybe that was it. But I was like, no, you know, I started back at, I think it started like at page three when it actually starts the story after the names in Chronicles, because it's the name of Kings, you know, and King Women's, <laughs> you know. So with that being said, um, I, when I got to one, sorry, hold on, let me get to it. It brought me to one Chronicles 11, okay? And I'm going to go exactly where I need to take you. Um, today's title, I picked Blood and Water. Blood and Water is actually what brought me to the title. Like, it, it spoke to me in here, so I did a little bit of research. I go, man, why does it say Blood and Water? What, what does it mean, the Blood and Water? And that's what prompted me. And it brought me to the part um, for the Red Sea. You know, where everybody, it's its a metaphor. You know, when people think um, Moses, well, he did part the Red Sea, but everybody sees water. Like, you know, he spoke to the water that God did, and he did. It's a metaphor. It's, it's, um, it's the beast system and the covet with the blood system, the beast system. And the water is a covet with our Father, the cleansing and the washing of the word of the Bible, the commitments. Um, Red Sea, and this is just so you'll know. And I did, um, where I did Red Sea, um, Bible meaning. Red Sea is, um, it's Israel physical salvation. It's out of the Red Sea became a code word for salvation. Israel prophets Constantly, uh, it says they kind of always like appealed to Exodus and basis of calling the nations to obedience, you know, and it was like, it, it was became a code. Um, it was a code name for the Red Sea, which meant salvation. Salvation is the restoration. And if you really think about it, um, the children were actually almost fighting to exit out. That's what Exodus means is to go ahead and come out. And um, it was also the basis for calling the nations to obedience back in a covet with our father, Jehovah, you know, and I also did um, the ocean, you know, um, it's the beginning of life on earth. It symbolizes a, a formless and unfamable, almost like um, the ocean could also be seen as a symbol, a stability that can exi that could ex exist largely unchanged for centuries. You know, it, it's it's um, a gathering, almost well, not almost. It's gathering back, coming back in the covet with our Father. You know, and the parting is parting the sea. Literally, He is. It's the beast system from God's people. You know, um, coming back in a covet with our father, Jehovah, and this is just for his, this is not just for his children, but it's for the whole world or staying in a beast system, you know, it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't even know, um, the, the most beautiful revelation that he gave me, you know, um, so the Red Sea is parting the Red Sea, uh, is bringing back salvation and parting the sea, parting the sea for the beast system, and back in a covenant with our Father Jehovah. So with that being said, 1 Chronicles 11, 
And David longed and said, That one that would give me a drink of water of the well of Bethlehem, that is at the gate, right? And the three break through the host of the Philistines, and they drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. That was by a gate, and he took it, and he brought it to David. But David would not, would not drink of it, but he poured it out to the Lord. And he said, and said, my God forbid me. This is God forbid it. He goes, God forbid it me, for I should do such thing. I should, I, and then this is what prompted, shall I drink the blood of this man that have put their lives in jeopardy? But in with the jeopardy, their lives have brought it, therefore, that he will not drink it. These were the things that were three mightiest, you know, and that's what brought me to that is saying, it's almost like the, uh, uh, the, the women at the well, right? When, when Jesus tells her and, and let this sink in, when she said, Oh, this is Jacob's well, you know, Jacob made this well, right? And God said, but if I, if you drink from my well, you will have an everlasting life. Do you understand the difference? Because Jacob's well was still in the world system, the beast system. We all were, you know, this whole world, this whole nation, this whole universe. So he's bringing that back, not only into captivity, he's bringing back his children. He's bringing also back um, the world, back into it. You know, as we exit out, we exit into the land of the living with the God of the living, not the God of the dead, you know. And this is a reconciliation with God. And as we exit out, we're not going to see the ending of the darkness because we're not going to be part of the darkness. We're going to be part of the new heaven, the new earth. You know, so then now it also took me to Genesis 1, 17. Sorry. And this is just remember how I was telling you piece it together. So Genesis 1, 17 through 19. Let me just get to it real quick. And let this sink in. This is like to kind of put a picture together what it means about parting the sea, the blood and the water. And that's what it means, how he parted the sea. And it's in here. And this is exactly what pieces us together. So Genesis 1, um, if I believe so, just so you know, in case you want to go back and look for it, um, is um, Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless, empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said the light was good. And he separated the light from darkness, from blood to water. And it's in here. It backs it up. But it, it says it's from light to water. It says there was light. So God saw the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness was called night. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> it's my favorite song. <laughs> it says, and there was an evening. So in the morning, he said the first day, God said, let there be a vault, which they're called um, Fritman, what God did. Skies, you know, like the heavens, right? That's what he created first, second, and third heaven. And God said, let there be a vault between waters to separate water from water. And God said, make the vault be separated, the water from under the vault and from the water above. And it was good. He called that vault sky. In the evening, there was morning and on the second day. And God said, let the water, let the water under the sky be gathered in one place and let the dry ground appear as it is good. And God said, call the dry land, and it gathered waters, and he called it seas. Again, let me read that. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry land and gathered the waters, and he called seas. And seas, like a sea. S-E-A. <laughs> And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees of the land to bear fruit of the sea, according to various kinds. It says, and it was so. 
So the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to the kinds and trees bearing fruit, the seed according to the kinds that God thought that it was good. And it was the evening and then it was called the third day. It says, and then God said, let the lights of the vault of the sky separate the day from night. Let them serve the signs and mark scare times, the days and years. Let the lights be vault and the sky be give light in the earth and it will be so. God made two great lights, greater light to govern the day and lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars and he said, let there be vault in the skies, give light to the earth. They governed the day and the night and he separated the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. It was the evening and in the morning on the fourth day. He said, and God said, let the water team, the living creatures, let the birds that fly on the earth across the vault of the sky. God created creatures of the sea, every living thing which the water teams and the moves about in it, according to the kinds that every winged bird, according to its kind, God saw that it was good. He blessed him and he said, be fruitful, increase the number and fill the waters of the sea. Let the birds increase the earth and it was in the evening. And it was in the morning on the fifth day. Now after that, it goes into the creation. So you'll know from the very beginning, the creator was the one that made everything. It was him. It was even before. And you, you see it from the very beginning. He created everything. And he said, let this part, this, this part, this sea, this part, that sea. We're going to dry the sea and it's going to be called earth. And then we'll put the sea, the sea, right? And there's more to it. Um, Remember when I read to you guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jumping in to kind of give you um, straight up what is it that God gave me the revelation. And before I do that. So I did the blood. I said um, the meaning of blood, right? It said God, it says God's sign was bearing, um, it was a very special significant. The blood signifies life that was given. It's sacrifice. It is the blood that God's covet is sanctified by making it. So you you come from a blood covet, right? We're blood and it's going to cleanse you because we come from that. And then it brought me um, to Genesis. I mean, I'm sorry. It's Leviticus 17, 11. Sorry. And I know I'm jumping back and forth, but this is so you could kind of put it together. Um Leviticus seventeen eleven. It says, For the life of the flesh is blood. I given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For the blood is he. It says, For the blood is that that maketh an atonement for the soul. So you're saving your soul from coming from a blood covet and you come to life. So you're bringing that to the altar to save your soul. It's, it's like I was just saying, Noah's Ark. What is it that you're bringing? Who bringing on your boat with you? And this is coming from the blood and separating the blood from the water. That's what it is. From the demonic system, which is in. And then, believe it or not, I googled <laughs> Cosmos. And remember how we just did um, Cosmos and I put Cosmo and it also brought Cosmic um, because it's in Greek. In Greek it's also in Cosmo with the K and then we spell it with the C, right? So I, I Googled it to do the Cosmo Bible meaning because it's in there. It's just that they word it and it's almost like they edit it. It says Cosmo is... It, says, it has variously meaning the order of, of good order, a government, a world order to the universe. The Bible uh, uses the world cosmo as man's system of government, economic, religion, education, culture, etc. It establishes apart from the creator, the creator which is God in this system. That's what it is. It's a cosmo that is in there that is separating you from blood and from water. 
the parting of the sea is God sitting there making an exit for all of us to live that world, come back into the land of the living because he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead, and he will take care of our enemies. And it tells you, and I also have a Bible to back that up. That's what he means, the parting of the sea. Because he's parting that. He's putting an end. There's not going to be no more darkness, no more evil, no, no more evil government that is a dictator. No more religion. Religion. It's a difference when somebody says, make themselves God, worship me. Um, and this kind, you know, that you get the elements that I read to you. Um, dogma, I believe, is one of, um, one of the entities. There's many of them. And I just read that to you yesterday. So it's the beast system. That it says a man's system is a government, economics, religion, education, culture, etc. Establishes apart from the creator. It's, it imparts it, it, almost like saying, hey, you know, we're God. We're this. We're that. We created it. We made this. We make life. We bring life. We made this world. We parted the sea. We did this. They did that. No, they didn't. They. This is what it means about the renewal of your mind. And it's all written in here. And then you also have to do some research of your own, you know, and ask, you know, well, what does that word mean? And then you do and you do always Bible meaning and always use your discernment because it also tells you about the ungodly religion, which we're not looking for that because I don't care. I'm not going to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? And this is just that sets you apart from the creator of God. And this is God bringing you back in a relationship with him. And is telling you the real enemy. And it's all written in there. All written in there. I don't, I'm not lying. You get even science, the ones that what? They're called cosmos. They even call the elements of the world. Mass, matter, neutrons, all that is all ungodly elements in this world. And it's all in there. And it's just a beast system to depart that the government, science, they did this, but it departs you. It makes it a religion where they're gods. They're the ones that did it. They're the ones that are doing it. And they forgot all about the creator. You know, they had evil intentions to this world. You know, come on, read it. You see it all over the news. I ain't making up nothing. They were sitting there going to start World War Three. World War Three. Only because God came in to intervene. And he's giving you an exit out. And he's going to part that. He's going to take care of the enemies. And it tells you on there, it's which side you're going to be on. And then you're coming from a blood covet into a water covet, which washes you and cleanses you by the word of the Bible. And that is also in there, brothers and sisters. It's all in there. And like I said, I'm going to continue singing like a canary and bringing you revelation, you know. And then, of course, it says, whatsoever man be a children of Israel is a stranger of a surgeon among you. Okay, um, but with that being said, Leviticus 17, 12. I'm sorry, is Leviticus, actually I could read that to you. Okay, let me just read that um, over you. And this is, and this is exactly, actually Leviticus is all of it to read, but I'm going to start off with six because I think it's just, I read something that pretty much does the breakdown. I'm going to read it all uh, from Leviticus 17 to Leviticus, um, Leviticus. Yeah. So here we go. It says, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son and unto the children of Israel and say unto them that this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, It says, What man soever there be in the house of Israel that killeth an ox, a lamb, or a goat, camp that killeth out of the camp that bringeth to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation offering the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood should be imputed unto that man that he that shed blood of that man should be cut off from among his people. He's saying it's not for us to go kill anybody, even if they're serving in the darkness. He's saying, I will put death on them because he's not, he's not the God that steals, kills, and destroy. Brothers and sisters, and it's in there. He says, I don't do that. That's the way the base system was. But they is the renewal of your mind is actually doing the study and getting really to the truth of this. And it delivers his children and it delivers this world. 
And this is his second coming. This is why he's doing it. That's why he brought us in to preach deliverance, to preach liberty to you of the real beast system that had control of us because we were living in sin. So we were in a blood covenant and he's bringing you back to him that is in a water covenant. Now it says, and he, and bringeth not onto the door, but the tabernacle of the congregation. Offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood should be imputed on that man that he had shed blood. He doesn't shed blood. That's not what he does. So, you know, when people say, well, it's God's fault. It's God's doing this. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. They make it look like it's God, but it isn't God. And he had shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people. It says to the end of the children of Israel that they may bring their sacrifice which they are to offer an open fill even unto many that bring them to the Lord onto the door of the tabernacle of congregation. The priest offer them peace offering unto the Lord and the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar. The Lord of the door, the tabernacle of the congregation burn the fat and the sweet savior, uh, savior of unto the Lord and they shall no more be offered their sacrifice unto devils. And it says it just like that. They were doing that to demonic world. He said, I don't do that. I don't ask you to go kill somebody for me. I ask you, bring them to the altar. Save them. That's what it means. Who are you bringing on your boat of the ark? When people say us or beast, maybe it was people that were lost in the darkness. And he's saying, I will take you too. I will take you. They don't want you, but I will take you. Save yourself. Bring somebody that is in the darkness that wants to be healed. I open my arms, not just to my children, but to this world. And it's in there. It is written. It is written. But the world has you so much tainted in making you think that God asked for blood sacrifice to kill somebody. The beast system says that. My father doesn't. That's the blood sacrifice, the water sacrifice that doesn't do that. But they had you tainted in thinking that. And if you read the Bible at first, I even said that, man. I honestly said, this still makes no sense to me. Like, why would God kill goats and, you know, you sacrifice them? You don't do that. You know, I honestly said, you don't do that. Like, that makes no sense to me because he never asked that. He never did. Again, so you could look for it. And it's like Revelation, the most beautiful. 17.7 is actually where it says that, brothers and sisters. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring around, whoring, that they shall be a statue for every unto them throughout their generations. Because they were doing that. They were doing, what was Solomon doing? What were the all daughters, all of us, we were out there sinning. I didn't know. And I'm going to be honest with you. And I lived in the biggest condemnation. It's that mix. And I even said, man, it's my, my ex. You know, the, the one I had three kids with, <laughs> you know, it almost like makes you question like, oh my God, you know, like I am so sorry, you know, but I lived like that because I was living under condemnation and I had to embrace that and know that I had been forgiven. And so have you, all of you, each and one of you from the riches there is in this world. Ask God for repentance, repent from sin. Don't seek the things of the world. Let it go. Surrender yourself. Bring to the altar. Go to church. Bring your family. Ask them to repent from sins. Get baptized. Have no idols. Have them if they sit there and they try to bring you the prettiest woman there is in this world. Or man, do not give in to it because hate. Satan is fighting for your soul. And that end is coming. Don't be on that side. And those shall say unto my whatsoever there is in the house of Israel of strangers which sojourn among you, offered a burnt offering or sacrifice, bring it unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, offered unto the Lord, even a man shall be cut off from among his people. Whatsoever man be of the house of Israel, stranger sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood. He said, I don't do that. You know, it says, and will be cut off from among his people. See, if you're doing that. You know, they, they sit there and they kill people and they eat them. And that's in there. The blood sacrifices, the demonic world does. My father doesn't. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar. 
So it's your blood, your blood, you come from a blood and you bring it into the altar and it turns to life. And it tells you that in there. It says, I have given it to you upon the altar. Make an atonement for your souls. Saying here, this is what I have to offer. I'm sorry, I'm coming back and he will restore that light in you, your soul back in you. That I said unto you, you know, because Satan had it, but it's going to be restored back to you because it's handed back to you. Wake up, wake up. It says they should also, it says the blood will make it an atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said unto you, children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat any blood. Neither shall any strangers that sojourn among you eat any blood. That means anybody that is a demonic entity, you know, that do not go around them. Do not go out there and mesh with them because they were going out there eating meat. That means they were whoring around. The man and the woman, everybody was. We all were. And um, it says, and cast, it says, and whatsoever a man there be out of the children of Israel, out of the strangers that sojourn among you, that you hunteth and catcheth any beast, any beast or fowl, they may be eaten. But he says, even pour out the blood thereof, covered it with dust. If it is life of all flesh, the blood of it, it is life thereof. Therefore, I say to the children of Israel, you should eat the blood. You shall, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all the flesh is blood thereof. Whatsoever eateth will be cut off. He said, I don't do that. I will cut you off. You know, that's the beast system that does it. And every soul that eateth, which dieth itself, which is torn with the beast, rather it be one of your own country or strangers, shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean, even that it shall be clean, and be washed with them, not that bathe in flesh, that he shall bear his iniquity. <laughs> Isn't that amazing revelation? Like, <laughs> like to get that most beautiful revelation is the most beautiful gift there is, because that makes you understand. It makes me understand the Bible. It makes me understand the high calling. And I understand what he chose me. You know, and I'm so glad he did. Yes, I, I suffered much. But he did say, take up that cross and walk. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He said, in me you will have peace. But in the world you will have tribulations. But be a good cheer because I have overcome the world. You know, I'm going to say it wasn't hard. It was hard. You know. Got backed up to the corner, but I did not quit. Heavenly. So that's Leviticus um, 17, 11. So I'm going to jump into Genesis and then go a little bit more with the water. But this is all in there. You know, um, did the research on Cosmo. Um, and I put Cosmo with a C. Uh, meaning, Bible meaning. That's also in the Bible. But they, you know how they have, you have NIV, K blah 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 they just word it different but try to hide the cosmo in there but cosmos in there so when i did cosmo bible meaning ta-da <laughs> it, it said just like this i wrote it word for word it says the bible was the world's cosmo as man's system because it's a beast system it's a man the, the world the way they preach it the way they say it actually it, it, it actually have ovulation you know um, man's system of government, economics, religion, education, uh, culture, etc. establishes apart from the creator of God is the system. Because it does. It makes you think it's all them. We did it. The government. I love you. We do this. We do that. You know, and separating you from God. That's what they were doing. The real creator of heaven and earth. And thank God that he's stepping in. Because and in the, in the midst of him stepping in. He's having his children preach to you and bring you back in a relationship with him. And ta-da, we win. And it tells you on there. So I'm going to do part two um, of this amazing revelation that he gave me. Um, so have an amazing Friday. We'll see you in a few. Give me time to post it. Um, and shalom, shalom.